So last time we spoke, Casey and I were setting up a new yard, which is what we call a hunting yard, um, because it is a public hunting land that we're gonna have bees on with a lot of really cool native species of plants on the land, which is making me so excited about that. But anyways, we are setting up two pallets at the hunting yard. Well, since then, we have now added two more pallets, actually just last night. She could have left today. Based on how many bees are in this box. There's a lot of bees in there that you and I are going to set up and get situated today. I still have some of them in nuke boxes. Um, I decided to be smart this time and let them orientate to the location before I try to put them in their boxes. We're also gonna look at those other two hives that I set up and at the same time, we're gonna do something called equalizing and talk about some splits so that hopefully it helps you this upcoming spring. <laughs> From the moment that sun comes up, from sun up to sundown, the work never stops. <laughs> All right. So what is equalizing? Equalizing is taking, literally taking from the super strong hives and giving them to the slightly weaker hives because a rising tide rises, raises all ships. So that is the approach that we like to take with our hives. Um, now there is a difference between a hive that has a bad queen and is failing and a hive that just needs a little bit of an extra boost. It takes a large amount of bees to really start getting a hive ramped up. Um, bees grow exponentially so you might as well just make them all equal and get them all building up on the same page and to kind of give you guys an idea so let me show you the difference between some of these hives so that one looks fairly strong but then when you go over to some of these other hives that I set up yesterday yeah see that one's looking a little bit weaker That one's looking a little bit weaker. That one's looking a little bit stronger. So the idea is to take a really good look at what is actually in the hives themselves. And if they have a whole lot of brood in comparison to another one, maybe only having a frame of brood, then you would take those some of those frames and give them to the weaker hives so that they also have that extra boost. But also this is really gonna help out with robbing too. That is a big problem when you have hives that are super strong in an area that also has weaker hives. So to prevent that, we try to equalize a little bit and make them all even so that if they even do try to rob each other, they have an equal amount of force to fight back. But also another reason why I like equalizing so much is drifting is such a big problem when you have a lot of hives in one location. Um, I don't know if it's partially just some queens are stronger than others or they just get a little bit lost on their way back, but drifting is inevitable. So to kind of counteract that a little bit, equalizing makes a huge difference to help with that. So one of the big things that I learned last year is that there is absolutely no reason in keeping a hive super, super weak. Um, it's not gonna build up and it's gonna take all year just to put it in a good standing, especially when you have other hives in the area. So it's better to just kind of keep them strong and it also really helps to set back your hives that may be on the verge of swarming. So instead of letting them swarm out or trying to do whatever else you can think of to keep them from swarming, why don't you just steal frames from them and give those to the weeks so that you're setting those back while also strengthening up your other hives. That is a big, big thing that I absolutely love doing. These look pretty good. 
So to continue on, this is a practice that is well known amongst commercial beekeepers that they utilize to kind of keep all their hives, like I mentioned, on the same page. It makes management so much easier when you know that they're all kind of in the same rhythm. So you don't have to go out there every single day to check maybe this hive or that hive because that hive was super strong and that hive was super weak. They're just all on the same page. And because of that, I think this is something that could be incredibly helpful for a backyard beekeeper as well especially as you are trying to grow and just trying to learn and have fun with your bees beekeeping can be a lot of work and this kind of helps keep you on track with your bees as well but also i have spent many years just kind of fighting with weak hives before and at the end of the year it truly is kind of pointless that hive never got a fighting chance to even try to build up so instead of just pulling teeth trying to get them to come around and throwing everything at it and seeing if it sticks why don't you just give them extra brood frames that is what i am learning in my own practices and it is making a huge difference all right so i got them all evened out um they actually weren't as bad as i was anticipating considering when i had put these two together um there were bees flying everywhere but they ended up finding out figuring out where they were supposed to go so i didn't have to do too much equalizing um in terms of bee population because when i did have these frames set they were already set as two brood frames a pollen frame a honey frame and then another random frame and then the rest just empty um but something that i did do so first off i ended up finding two queens um and the nukes i installed into these two so oopsie that happens but that's all right um all of those pallets that we took these from were on the verge of swarming anyway so that just saved us a little bit of work of trying to keep them held back anyways um we do have some queens that are almost done in some of the splits that we did two weeks ago. So those will be emerging here shortly. Um, just in time for all the drones to be out and about and roaming around. Um, but then the other thing that I did. So since I just put these two pallets here last night and set them all up today. I decided to go through each one of these boxes. They weren't supposed to have any queen cells in them because I did not give them any eggs, but you know how it goes when it comes to frames. Sometimes there's a couple eggs just laying around. And it was really interesting to see that they actually were taking eggs and moving them to where they want them to be. There were not any swarm cells on any of these frames when I put them in here, but there were swarm cups, but they were not charged. But they took eggs and they put them into those swarm cups so they could draw them out into actual queens which is actually really cool um so i took all of the frames that were in these hives that did have capped queen cells on them and i moved them over to here so this palette com is completely made up of queen cells so it kind of gave them actually it did give them a head start when it comes to the whole entire queen making process and then i just swapped out their brood frames back over here and the reason i did that is i am going to install six queens that we are trying to keep from swarming they were about to swarm so we ended up having to pull them so i'm just going to plug them right into these hives and when i do that then they're going to have eggs in that hive that they were previously in because I have them in a nuke box right now and those are going to then turn into queen cells. Where is he making queens on queens on queens on queens? Um, a cool way to do it if you don't want to graft. So these should not have any queen cells in them whatsoever but I will check them one more time before I put in the mated queens. I actually well actually I might end up doing that tonight. I might be able to drive back over here and put the mated queens in here tonight so that will save some time. Um, now I did run out of hives because those other two over there did have queens in them so these two have cells but these other two um are just like how the other ones are so i'll plug six queens into these later and they will be all good to go i'm sorry i didn't do too much like talking to you guys while doing it or showing it i completely changed the plan that i was going to do i was not planning to do this so you guys know how it goes when you're in the beard you're like hmm what if I do this? You just kind of sit there for 10 minutes. You're like, well, you do some bee math um, and decide just to try it out and see what happens. One of the biggest things that I learned last year is, like you've heard me say many times before, I'm not a huge fan of walkaway splits. Now, Casey does like walkaway splits. So maybe I need to give him a second try. I guess we'll see. Um, the key to walkaway splits, I will say though, is when you do do a split, it has to be stupid strong um, in order for it to be successful. But you're still going through that like six 
weeks, six week process of not having a queen, which I don't really like doing that. Um, especially this time of year, I'd rather have a queen in there. I'm helping them grow, getting them ready for the flow and whatnot. So I'm trying to keep queens in as much as possible and shorten that time uh, to the smallest amount as possible that they don't have to have, that they will not have a queen. But all right, the bee work does not stop. Off to the pumpkin yard to go through those hives, add a third box again, even though I just took it off. Um, but we are on a small flow right now, which blows my mind. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys soon. Don't quit and be fit. No, they seem kind of calm. Oh, real figure. Queen accepting behavior right here. They're not trying to sting you. But they're very excited. Because they were they probably just came to the realization that I killed all the cells that were in there, so they're like, no! We're just gonna die now. <laughs> so they're like, oh my gosh. Well, I'll get on video the next one because they like all turned and looked at her and like ran over there. <laughs> they want her bad. <clears throat> all right, guys, let's, let's see what it looks like when they accept a queen almost instantly or reject her almost instantly Ooh. I'm like oh my gosh what is this what is this what is this yeah they're, they're starting to push her foot down on the ground Yeah, their, their tails aren't pointing down. They're not trying to sting the cage. You can move them off of her. They would not release themselves from this cage. If they were trying to ball her. If they were going to ball her. Oh, they got so excited. Listen to that buzz. They're all like, we have a queen! <laughs> like, all of them have stopped and, like, started buzzing. <laughs> like, literally every single one stopped what they're doing to buzz. And they're not singing you. They would be singing you if you did that. Yeah, they're excited. Are they going to be able to get her out of there? Yep. It is April 9th in Michigan. We just put these third boxes on. Oh my gosh, was it Friday? Yeah. So it was like four, three or four days, four days ago. And they already have each one of these frames three quarters of the way full or each cell three quarters of the way full with nectar. It's April 9th in Michigan and they're on a flow. I have no idea where they're getting it, but cool.